R.I.P. Tom Benson. Shout out to the whole Who That Nation. Now who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. I say who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. Oh, who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. I say who that? That fever, that flavor, that funk. You got that fever? Yeah, yeah. That fever for the flavor. Got that flavor? Yeah, yeah. That flavor for the funk. You got that fever? Yeah, yeah. That fever for the flavor. Got that flavor? Yeah, yeah. That flavor for the funk. I got that fever, my people. See, we not equal, my people. I'm like that dog. Saint underneath the steeple, my people got you breezy the feature, and our defense the sequel. The D line and linebackers, man, they come in the reach of make enemies some believers. Cause we overachievers. DBC 50 50 balls, and we call them keepers. Y'all can follow this leader, cause Sean Payton will teach you. Yo, Saints Talk listeners, what's up? We back with another episode of Saints Talk. We here. I'm Kevin. We got Nick here, and we got a special guest here for us today. We got Mr. Chris Titon himself here. If you guys, I wish you guys could have saw the camera before it kind of jumped on because he was dancing around to the Saints intro. <laughs> That's um, a good song. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he was lit. <laughs> he was so lit. I was like, bro, don't make me get up out of this chair. <laughs> no, who's who's that by? Oh, it's a uh, PAT man. So, PAT, so, yeah, he's man. local rapper. Yeah, he, uh, wow. he he's got he's got the the who that flavor. Yeah, who that flavor? The name of the song. <laughs> no, but like Jay Z flow. <laughs> he killed it, man. Hey, he killed it. He killed it. We've been that song been holding us down for a while. So we was just talking, man. We may have to get it like looked at because there's some names that's gonna be a little expired in there. So I know they say Sean Payton in it. Yeah. Yeah, I know, man. Tough Andrew Brees. Andrew Brees, man. This is weird. So Chris, thanks for joining us today. We're here to chop it up with you a little bit, talk about some uh things you got going on. Pretty sure pretty sure you guys know what that is, and um just kind of get some insight into what went into the movie and um, you know, what it was like for you to kind of go through that process and you know, a little ins any in inside Sean Payton information you may have for us. So uh, we're going to pick your brain a little bit here for us. But uh, yeah, sure. thanks for being here, man. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. 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 So, Chris, yeah, starting out, man, just just big picture. Um, you know, tell us about the, the movie coming out home team and just kind of the process of uh, putting that together uh, with, with Sean Payton. Uh, home team is, uh, I mean, you guys are in New Orleans. You know that, you know, Sean was suspended for a year. But what not many people know is that during that year, what he did was go back to Texas and coach his 12-year-old son's football team. So you got, you know, a Super Bowl winning NFL coach coaching 12-year-olds. And I heard that and I was like, oh, that's that's good. <laughs> There's something there. Uh, so, yeah, my uh, uh, me and my buddy Keith Blum, we wrote the script. And, uh, you know, it took us nine months and, you know, cut it down and all the, you know, lots of 12 hour days and mm. um, sent it to Sandler. And Sandler was like, you wrote this for Kevin James, right? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's Kevin James's vibe. And, mm. you know, it's, it's, you know, cause every comedian has his own vibe. And he's like, all right, let me send it to him. You never know though. You're, you know, essentially what he said to me in so, not so many words was he's Kevin James and you're Chris Titone. So <laughs> it might take him a second to read it. And I was like, cool, you know, take your time, you know, three days later, 7 a.m. phone call. Wow. He's in. I already talked to Netflix. They're in. It was it was a great moment. Man. It was a good moment. Wow. I called him and started crying. Oh, man. Because at this point, Keith's, uh, Keith is a bartender and we're mid COVID. So all the bars are closed. He's back uh -huh. living with his dad. Got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah. That was a big deal. That's, that's yeah, it definitely sounds like a big deal for him. So, like, what, what, like, what made Kevin. What do you think made him like so quick to accept it? Was it like the script was just so good? He's followed Sean. He's, you know, kind of paid attention. I mean, you don't have to ask him, but I, I think it was the the father son story of it. The guy mm -hmm. loves sports, the sports aspect. And really what we did was we wrote like a really good movie first with no jokes. And then we added jokes. Boom, 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 boom. Every eight seconds. Joke, 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 joke. So it's a really good movie even without the jokes. I think that's what he loved most about it. So yeah, that's interesting to me the, the the process of putting it together because to me like and this has become even more relevant just given the recent events it's just it's 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 an expo exploration of this highly competitive man that has been just so identified with his job and this process stepping away from it and and having to adjust to life without the NFL and now here we are again what what were some of the things that that surprised you to learn about Sean during that time of of just going through that and finding a way to, to, you know, have something day to day where he wasn't a coach uh, of a NFL team. You know what, you know, what surprised me most about Sean about this whole process was working with him on it 
he was so cool about like, yeah, you could say that. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put that in there. That's that's cool. He never he never had like a oh don't don't talk about that man. Don't no 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 don't bring that up. Change this. It, he was so way cooler than anyone I could possibly imagine about like, hey, is it okay if I like if I say this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fine. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So I mean, everyone knows that Sean is like this like highly competitive, very detailed oriented guy. So like with the movie being, you know, loosely based on him, like how, how much of his input was, you know, did he really like put into the character? What, you know, did you guys kind of say, okay, this is kind of how we perceive Sean Clayton as a person. And this is kind of how we want to portray him. Or did you guys kind of chat with him first and say, okay, well, you know, how do you want to be portrayed in this movie? Like how, how did that process come about? No, I mean, we just wrote, I, I mean, I know Sean pretty well. I've been dating his daughter for six years. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. him on the table and also I know him on the sideline. You know, yeah. I know what you guys see and I know what, what you know, a family member would see. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it as close to him as I could, you know. And um, I mean, when he when he read it, because I wanted it, I wanted him to be okay with it. So he had to yeah. okay it. Yeah. Yeah. He read it and he was like, yeah, it was great. It was great. Uh, it was it was really really cool i think he changed like one or two small small things and they were they were all stuff that's like nah this this didn't happen this way it was it was like this like he made it better yeah i see were you were you nervous at all when he read it like i know when i write stories about certain people and they're kind of involved in the process and it can be a sensitive subject i'm nervous as i'm awaiting their feedback on the story what was that like for you just kind of that when you handed that first draft to him and you're you're kind of in that moment of waiting to get that get that feedback from him you know, I was nervous, but I mean, I'm a writer. So I've been on Happy Madison sets for 10, yeah. 15 years and pitching yeah. jokes to Adam Sandler, the funniest man to ever live. Mm -hmm. And I've heard him say to me like, nah, this ain't funny. And that'll, yeah. that'll, you know, make your skin thick. So <laughs> I, I guess, I guess it was a different type of nervous. Like I didn't, I didn't think, I wasn't worried that he wouldn't think it was funny. I was worried that he'd be like, bro, what are you trying to do to me? Right. You know? But it's a it's a family friendly movie, so there was nothing in there that's like nuts, you know. The craziest stuff is the throw up scene. Yeah, that's and that's in the trailer for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't want to uh, send him something. He's like, all right, you no longer date my daughter. <laughs> you up out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I made sure to write a family friendly movie, um, and also, you know, KJ has higher standards. I think for like keeping it okay for kids than anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, he really. He, he wants every one of his movies for every single person on the planet to be able to watch and not be traumatized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. The more, the better. Right. Yeah. One, one thing that stands out to me just about the movie and like the setting of it is, you know, when the bounty gate thing happened, right. And he got suspended for a year. Yeah. You know, he, he obviously he was upset. He was, he was pissed off, which he has, he should have been because it was, you know, it was crazy. But he's still pissed. oh, I don't think he's ever oh, not yeah. going to be pissed about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no getting over that. It's yeah. never going to. I mean, just to I don't, don't get me started on the money. The you know, it's just it's just a lot of different levels to the to the craziest. You know, just how crazy that whole situation was, and how mm -hmm. the double standards just exist on so many levels. But that, that's another podcast. You don't want to be here for twenty hours. But you know, <laughs> but one thing that that that's interesting to me is like I feel like as time passed by, like it became easier for him to deal with that time. Right? I remember like him and say for instance peter king is a nfl writer right and him and peter kind of mended fences and it seems like as time went by it became easier for him to deal with that whole situation and this movie kind of feels like the culmination of that right is him like kind of just embrace even though he, he's always going to be pissed about it he's embracing the negativity of it and kind of turning it into something that's better and this movie kind of seems like you know it's you know the like i say it's the kind of the conclusion of that whole story yeah kev like like you mean like the silver lining of it all and that's silver lining. That's one way to look listen, at it. Yeah. I, I think the silver lining actually outweighed the negative in this mm. case. And the silver lining isn't the stupid movie. The silver lining is hanging with Connor. I mean, Connor played football for years before Sean coached his team. And you yeah. know, oh, little Stevie's dad is gonna be an assistant coach, or little Brian's dad's gonna be assistant coach. He yeah. knew that Sean could never and and would never have the time to be on the field or even in the stands because the seasons happen at the same time. Right, right. You know, and all of a sudden he's looking up and there's his dad on the sideline wearing a Warriors hat. I mean, yeah, that, that creates a connection that, you know, you can't buy. Chris, just how much, like how foundational is that year to kind of just their family, you know, and just having that relationship for a guy that works 
20 hours a day and like you said would have never had that opportunity to do a lot of these things and spend that family time during the fall during football season and, and all that um i mean i don't know you'd have to ask them but yeah. i think it played a big part uh, you know uh, i know in the movie i made it play a huge huge part but i think in reality now now listen sean was was just like any other hardworking dad i mean you know, he saw Connor, he saw Megan all the time. It, sure, it wasn't yeah. nearly as, ex- you know, uh, crazy as the movie is. But, um, yeah, I think there's a difference, you know, because he would fly in maybe for a game and watch it and then fly right out. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, now he's there seven days a week, you know, cutting oranges. And that was, that's the name of Megan's piece um, on uh, <laughs> NFL Network. Cut yeah, Nor- nice, nice. But I wish nice. I was there. I mean, I got, I got like probably called 2,000 pictures from that season because I had to like really learn about this story before I wrote it. Yeah. And I mean, there's shots of Sean Payton cutting oranges and giving it to kids. <laughs> man, that's... <laughs> post it, man. I want to see it. Can we make that the, the art for the spot? <laughs> like Chuck, with a dull butter knife, like cutting up oranges. <laughs> no, but it's, it's nuts, isn't it? Like th- think about like how he explains to like, for instance, like Drew, like, Hey, when you drop back in the pocket, you know, you take your first look, take your second look, take your third look. How do you explain that to a 12 year old? You know? <laughs> yeah. I can hear Sean like telling them like five steps, seven steps, drop back your foot. Got it. Your time has got to be a certain percentage on the same one. They need to realize that the kid is in third grade. I mean, sixth grade. And then he's like, all right, yeah. let me like dial it down a little bit. Um, yeah. The approach. So different, man. So different. yeah. Yeah. I so bet, I bet. they'll kill us if we don't ask you this. The most talked about aspect of this, this movie, obviously locally was, Kevin James is, is Sean Payton. Why, why did you envision Kevin as, as being Sean Payton when you were putting the movie together? Uh, Kevin's a great actor. You know, I wasn't looking for a lookalike. There's other actors that look yeah. more like Sean Payton. I was looking for the best actor, you know, yeah. the best, the, the person with the best set of skills. And listen, I know, I know Kevin's uber famous for his comedic ability, but the guy can do drama really mm. well. And, and mm. listen, maybe he never, breaks out of that because he's so known for comedy maybe he never does a, a you know maybe he's never accepting an academy award but he certainly deserves one the, kid, the guy can act man and that's no that's what i wanted i i couldn't i didn't want to bring in somebody who was like a mediocre actor which you know the weird thing is that he was my first choice and i actually got him yeah, yeah I, I was so thankful when he said yes man it was like what i got my first choice usually hey, write a yeah. movie you know, your first choice says no. Your second choice says, nah, I'll think about it, but no. And then the third choice says maybe. Got it. Got it. Got it. I mean, and just to kind of continue on that thread, I mean, you know, Kevin James in there and that's the name that everyone know, but that's, I mean, there's some other people in who I, f- I find highly funny. I know, um, Deuce Bigelow obviously is like someone that you just, just see his face, you just see his face and start laughing. Right. right. And then oh, yeah, the Bill Crawford is funny as they come. I mean, like, the, you know, the, I mean, it just seems like it's going to be a funny movie with some of these other guys that's in there other than Kevin James. All these guys are hilarious. Rob crushed. Um, he's man. He's so funny. He might be the best character actor on the planet. I mean, the guy mm. sinks into a character, sinks in. He was yeah. bringing his own props. No joke. He was bringing <laughs> his own props. Um, and uh, Gary Valentine, uh, Kevin's brother. His brother. He, he did like a big character. He's funny. Uh, and then, of course, Taylor Lautner. My, I wrote it with Keith Blum, my best friend. And then my other best friend, Taylor Lautner, we, you know, he said yes. I couldn't believe when he said yes. That was, I think, a big selling point to KJ was we were like, hey, Taylor mm-hmm. Lautner's already already uh, sewn in. And he was like, oh, OK, maybe that was it. Who knows? Yeah. So one of, the th- one of the things that I feel like has been like central to the Saints success is kind of having the same people around and having a crew and people that are familiar. And it seems like your guys' crew, it's a lot of the same people. You have a lot of the foundational pieces and you guys work together. How, how much does that help when you guys are, are doing these projects just to have the chemistry that, that you guys have built over the years and being able to write things for different people and and just knowing what to expect, at least from some of the people from project to project? It, it more than helps. That's That's the secret sauce. That is the secret sauce. Because when you're working with someone for 12 hour days in some city that you don't live in, you're at a hotel and you know, you need a shorthand. You need, hey, Steve, lights. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he knows exactly what you mean. Yeah. And also, you know, just the comfortability, you know, you know, when you get to know somebody and you're like getting to know them on your first like year project or whatever, it's kind of yeah, weird. Yeah. Or all that right. shit. Oh, can I curse? Sorry. 
oh, all, you that, you all that stuff's out the window. And, uh, you know, you, you know, now you see Steve and you're like, Hey, what's up? How's your kids? What's going on with your wife? Um, you know, stuff like that, man, that, that is the secret sauce. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I can understand that. I mean, that's how me and my guy run this pod, man. It's like, you know, it's kind of like yin and yang sometimes. And the more you work with somebody, the the, the easier it is. So um, definitely can relate there. Um, yeah, also, you got to spend 12 hours a day with somebody. You better like them. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's. Yeah. That's tough. <laughs> let me just make, well, my wife listens to this. So let me make sure. <laughs> 12, 12, hours, 12 hour days, six days a week is what we shot. And also, what do you think when you, what you're doing when you get off? You think we all got like friends in new Orleans. Like I knew, like I was there with Megan. So she has some friends and, and, yeah. and whatnot, but like our whole crew, they didn't know nobody, you know, that they, they had to hang out with each other. So really you're spending 18 hours a day with these people and they all dig each other, man. They all dig each other. It's one big family. Nice, man. At least you guys got good food down there. Cause I mean, you know, no better place to get a good snack, you know, in between us, uh, in, in between movie shots and stuff. Oh like man. That, so. Sophia, uh, toast for breakfast. Get out of here. Oh Ooh. man. Oh man. Oh man. Sean said he needs, when he was talking in, in this retirement speech, he was like, yeah, I'm gonna try to get back into shape. Now that was like one of the first things he mentioned that he's going to do. Yeah, He might have to move to do that. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to happen yeah. in New Orleans. So. I mean, he, he ain't got time to work out, you know, he doesn't have time to eat. He's ha he's, He's eating a sandwich mid meeting. This guy. So hopefully yeah. now he has now he has some time to just do some self care, man. Just chill for a second, just decompress. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, just as hard as I mean, it's it's quite known how hard the guy works. But just you know, hearing it like from someone who's closer to him, you know, like you are, you know, if you do that routine for year after year after year during the season and during the off season, I can definitely see how like you just kind of take a step back and say, all right, I need to take a step back, kind of gather myself, see where things are for myself and then kind of hit the reset button in some ways. So, um, yeah, take a step further. It's not even the, the routine for him is like, find something new because mm -hmm. every week that coach knows what he's going to do. He knows that he knows that. So, I mean, it's like a chess game. So the routine is like be freshen it up, you know? Yeah. 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 He's constantly yeah. on the edge. Yeah, I know that look that <laughs> he has this look to his face. And I don't know if you've ever received it. Uh, hopefully not. But there's this, this, oh, kind, no. <laughs> this kind of common look that Sean has when he's upset at someone. If someone fumbles and they walk to the sideline, he has this look <laughs> on his face. And then in the season he was gone, I remember they put a picture or this gigantic picture of his face in the practice facility of him with the it's like the oh, Sean yeah. Payton face. So Oh no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm pissed off face. Yeah, yeah. it's like That's it's kind hilarious. Of it's yeah. players. It was like a billboard. It was like a, a like a 30 foot picture, just yeah, gigantic. It said yeah. do your job at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, do your job. That's it. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, no, so he hope listen, you know, he he I've seen games. I know he gets pissed off on the sideline about this or that, but man, when he's, you know, when it's downtime and we're on the dinner table, he's the happiest guy in the world. He's, mm. you know, pass me the mashed potatoes. Oh, I got a story about mashed potatoes. You know, like he's <laughs> stories. He's he's story, lucky man. as hell. He really is like one of the greatest storytellers, like walking the earth, like his ability to, to set up a story and tell it and just get to the punchline. It's like, I'm envious every time I hear this guy tell a story. Cause he, he could definitely write better than anybody. I know if he wanted to sit down and write something. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, you know, I started out doing stand up now, I'm a professional comedian. I've, I've had probably 500 people say to me, like, I'm funny. My friends think I'm funny. I could do stand up. <laughs> and I'm like, uh huh. Let me tell you right now, Sean Payton could absolutely do stand up. No problem. Uh, no yeah, problem. No question. Him and you know who else? Cam. Cam's hilarious. No, Cam definitely Cam is. Cam is yeah. super hilarious. Yeah. His, it seems like he come across, come across that way as a funny guy. Listen, funny if, you can get, well. if you can get Sean Payton to do stand up, You'd be the you you you'd be a New Orleans legend, man. Like seriously, uh, Sean's not doing stand up. Yeah, uh, could you imagine that? Get them touring Cam opening for Sean. Oh man, oh, come man. on, come on. Or Sean opening for Cam, right? <laughs> if if it's, if it Cam has it his way. <laughs> yeah. But Sean's work ethic, man. I mean, I only know two guys that work that hard: him and Sandler. And like, mm. you know, people wonder like, why are they so successful? They're so successful, man. You you hang out with them for three days, you're like, oh, that's that's why. Makes sense. That's Makes why sense. it's talent, but. Town only gets you so far. It's it's you know twenty hour days. That's that's what happens. Yeah, twenty yeah. hour days over you know five ten year period. You can't catch up. Just like Kobe said, you can't mamba catch. mentality. I was thinking the same thing, man. It sounds like mamba mentality. Can't catch me. It's yeah, impossible. definitely, definitely, definitely. Chris, so the the one like is there one thing that you were surprised to learn about Sean through this process, or just knowing him in, in general, just 
away from football preconceived notions and then you get to know him kind of as a guy is there any like one thing that stands out to you it's no not question. really i mean you know through, through the whole process he was the same person he didn't change he didn't say anything that i was like oh i mean it was just like i would call him up and you know when he came to set i was like hey you want to come to set he's like oh, i can't today but maybe tomorrow between you know 805 and 807 you know <laughs> <laughs> i was like bro we're shooting a movie about you you want to stop by and he's like yeah i'm gonna just you know i'll call you back you know like he yeah. was the same sean man that's that's awesome man that's awesome um my my final question it's kind of like it's kind of like a little little jokey but how did you know how did Connor feel about his casting and how he's oh, yeah. portrayed in the role? Because I think what uh, Tate Bloom is the one that's portraying him in the movie. So, like, you know, did you get any any feedback or any little you know jabs at him um, from him in your process of making it? No, Connor was one hundred percent positive on board. I mean, I was writing a movie about him, so he he was pretty excited. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I guess that's true. I don't know how excited he is about like the fame aspect of it because you know he just wants to be Connor Payton, but yeah. I, you know, I don't think that'll last long anyway. But maybe it will. Who knows? I was telling him because he wants to get into football. He wants to be a GM. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I, I think maybe it'll help him. Hopefully it will. So when he walks into those meetings for interviews, people will be like, oh, I kind of know your story a little bit. Who knows? I know it helps with like acting. If I walk in and people are like, oh, you're Sandler's bro brother. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. yeah. Who yeah. knows, though? I, I, you know, that goes both ways where people are like, oh, you're Sandler's brother-in-law. So you, we know why <laughs> you're here. Yeah, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes I know this. Well, Connor will Connor will forever be famous in New Orleans for like I think people some people credit with credit him for in, Mark Ingram being drafted to uh, the Saints because the story goes that the Saints took Cam Jordan in the first round that year and then Connor wanted Mark Ingram. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it's like the, the you know, the legend as it goes is Connor went in there, spoke to his dad. And then a few picks later, Mark Ingham, you know, getting drafted to the Saints in the first round. Maybe. So. maybe I know I know very few people have any type of influence at all on Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know if Connor does, but I know I know, you know, if if Sean, if Connor says something to Sean, like, oh, this this new guy out of out of, you know, BYU, you know. He's yeah. really good. I mean, who knows? Maybe Sean takes a look at him the next day. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe it gets that guy's foot in the door. Yeah, at least yeah, you get your look on tape. That's all you can ask for from a coach like him. So yeah. Chris, what time does he uh do you, is there like a specific time the movie starts streaming? That's it's on oh, Netflix, obviously. Yeah, midnight to my midnight tonight, Cali tonight. time. So that's what is that? Two 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 AM. Two AM two AM for you guys, yes. three three AM for New York. They hit the button, boom, and she's live. What, what's your process just when it comes out? Like, are you, are you checking Twitter to see feedback? What do you, what do you do after the movie comes out? Um, you know, watch it, I guess, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, yeah. hopefully I get numbers. I know, I know Netflix is really secretive about their numbers, rightfully so. So, uh, I, if I had to guess, they're going to tell me like, they're going to, they'll give me a call and be like, yo, this did so great, blah, blah, blah. blah. And if I don't get a call, I'll just assume it tanked. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for I'm a second saying, movie. You'll know. Right. <laughs> you guys got to understand this is my first one. Like uh, I'm, I'm on the roller coaster for the first time. I've been, I've been on the roller coaster before, but like the back seat, like I've punched up Adam's movies, but now yeah. I'm like in the front seat and it's a completely different view and it's a completely different ride. Well, yeah. I'm excited to see it, man. I, I've been uh, I've been waiting for it. Um, I'm sure it's going to be great. I love everything you guys do. I'm I'm the guy that's that's keeping the king king of Queens where he runs on. So anything Kevin does, <laughs> automatically I'm tuning in. Uh, yeah, that's I, I'll argue that's like one of the best sitcoms of all time. But uh, that's that's another that's another every show. Every episode uh, solid. Every episode. Yeah, there's yeah. not a bad there's one. one where you're like bored. And and man, Taylor, I got Taylor back back acting. Man, he took some time off. Because, oh yeah. You know, he got engaged and and you know he was just like. Dude, I did Twilight. Like, I'm not beating that. And I would hang out with this kid and golf with him, and and you know, tell him like, "Hey, I I wrote a movie, and I'm I'm you know, I I named one of the characters Coach Taylor." And he, you know, <laughs> he literally told me because I'm you know I'm best friends with him. So he was like, "Dude, you know how many people tell me like I I wrote a movie for you, bro?" Yeah, like, that happens twenty times a week, you know. And the day that he signed the contract to be in the movie, he was like, "Oh." You weren't fucking around. You really <laughs> did it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I've been for a long time, man. I, I uh, I've gone to games with him. I've been in Sean's suite thirty times. Wow, thirty wow. times with Taylor. Wow, He's well, I'm going to introduced me to Megan. Oh, oh, really? 
Oh. Yeah. Oh. So we would all go to games together and hang. Oh, I got a funny story. Um, 2018, we're in the suite. It's halftime. And uh, Connor's best friend, Harlan Hare. I switch his name in my phone to Sean P. Okay? Oh, man. And I say to Harlan, I go, hey, wait like two minutes and text me, get Taylor down here. I need someone. I need someone on special teams. We're, we're short guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting next to Taylor. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a good show. Good show. What do we got left? Five, and I, and I pick up my phone and it came in perfect. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And I show Taylor, this kid jumped up. Oh man. Around like, what, 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 he didn't have time to think like, no, nah, man, they, they put the roster in the day before. Yeah, none of that registered. <laughs> he makes a beeline for the door. Harlan had to tackle him. Wow. And when I told him it was a joke, uh, he he was very sad. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I almost felt bad. That's his moment. That's his moment. That's his moment, man. It looks, he, he looks like an athlete the way he trains, man. No, <laughs> he's super athletic, but you know, he's no Deontay. You know, like, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's running back. Like, oh, <laughs> that's hilarious, man. That's hilarious. He's, he's by so far when, the most athletic actor I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, 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 we'll we'll take that. We'll take that. So when I watch it, man, you know. Like, do I need to throw a few back? Throw a few back when I'm watching it, you know, just to kind of take an edge off, or um, you know, no, it's, it's, a, bit... it's a it's a family friendly, good feel good, you know, yeah. Sandlot, Little Giants, gotcha, kind, kind of feel. You don't got to throw one back. You can if you want. Yeah, I will maybe. <laughs> no, you know, man, maybe I yeah, just, just make sure and... it's compatible. You know. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Grab a snack, and you know, it's on Netflix, so you can pause and pee. It's great, man. There you go. Yeah. Good to go. Good to go. Pause Good and pee. That's the best Pause pitch I've pee. ever heard for Netflix, man. That's really <laughs> that's, it, too. That's why I love Netflix so much, man. I mean, first of all, their global outreach. We're like, there's yep. going to be a kid tomorrow in like Venezuela mm-hmm. watching yeah. the movie I wrote. That's bananas to think yes. about. Yeah. And then the second reason is I got to pee, man. Like, I, I hate <laughs> being in a theater. Pause and, me too, bro. I know. The I go to the bathroom. I come back and I'm like, Megan, what, what happened? <laughs> She's like, well, the guy doesn't like the other guy. And I'm like, well, which is the guy? And she's like, well, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Both out of here. And then we're having that conversation and we both miss that part. I mean, it's been it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially those three hour Marvel movies or something. You're like, oh, oh man, you just got to yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you should make sure, make sure Netflix, uh, make sure you copyright that. Pause and pee. That could be the new Netflix and chill. So you know, get, your, get your bread off of that, man. Netflix and chill and pause and pee. <laughs> I mean, pause and pee and pause and pee. That's what's up, man. Well, man, thanks. Thanks for joining us. We, we appreciate it. Uh, you guys make sure you guys go to Netflix. Uh, everybody, everybody got a Netflix uh, subscription, so don't act like you don't. So there's no excuse for you to not to watch it. Or you uh, know somebody with one. You know somebody with one. Get that login. You didn't hear that from I me. I actually but. don't have one. I just steal my mom's. Oh, there, there you, know. you go. They, well, <laughs> see, <laughs> that's family, so it counts, right? You just got an account. <laughs> Other accounts, though, don't share passwords. Make sure you're buying them for, you know, sports websites. Of that's, course, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Netflix, Only for sports. Yeah. Netflix, just get those numbers up. Get the numbers up, man. That's real. That's real. That's real. So there's no excuse not to, not to watch it. Uh, go check it out. It's, it's going to be streaming tonight, uh, 12 o'clock if you're in the West Coast, 2 o'clock if you are in Central Time Zone, and, you know, New York, you guys can figure out the rest. So, uh, Chris, man, thanks thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, you have one of the funniest IMDB photos ever that I've ever seen. So <laughs> I just wanted to bring that up because I was what like- is it? Well, you're kind of flipping. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a flying animal at, at somebody's <laughs> camera. <laughs> so they don't let actors or writers pick those. You, they just oh. they pick ah. it from from the eight million photos I've had. Oh over, man, over yeah. Years well, I love it. I love it. You pick that one. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. If I saw that photo, I'd be like, all right, show me a movie that he's wrote, he's writing or involved in. And I'm, and oh, I'm okay. Watching it. So it's, all right. it's, it's all good. It's all Maybe good. Maybe I man. don't send the email. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Hey, hey, guys, check out the movie. Check out the movie. It'll be, it'll be here uh, tomorrow. A story about uh, Sean Payton and coaching his sixth grade son after uh, the Bounty Gate scandal. So um, thanks for, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Uh, we will be telling our listeners and subscribers, everybody, to check out the movie. And, uh, yeah, hope, hopefully it does as better than anything that Netflix is going to put out anytime soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks right. for your time. Thank, thanks. Right. Appreciate it. Cheers. All right, Kev. Leftwich 
AG. Mm. DA. DA. One common thread. Jimmy Sexton. Jimmy Sexton. <laughs> Jimmy Sexton. It Jimmy always Sexton. leads back to Jimmy Sexton. But yeah, no, things are moving a little bit. And hey, that's called pushing P right there, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Sexton pushing P. <laughs> you know what? We'll do we'll do this on a members only. We're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna have this conversation on a members only. You guys check out home team, check it out, watch a movie for Chris. I'm sure yeah. it'll be good. It's about it's about Sean Payton. It is funny though, like the movie like became much more relevant to me after he retired because I'm like, man, this dude. And it's always relevant, obviously, but like yeah. this dude, it's like about his year away from football. And like, that's the thing you wonder about these people. Like, can they survive post football? Yeah. And, um, yeah. 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 Not having football in their life. And this guy already did it once, but it's a little bit different this time because he knew he was coming back and he knew how long he was away. And now everything's on yeah. him. But it is interesting. Um, and I'm sure Sean learned a lot about himself that year that he didn't know. Oh, yeah. No question. Yeah. No question. No question. But uh, yeah. yeah, you guys. Yeah. We'll check let, it we'll out, let man. Check it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the coaching conversation on, on the members only. That'll be out Friday. Um, so watch the movie, listen to the podcast, and your Friday's full. You can probably blow off half a day of work just between the two. There you go. There you yeah. go. There you go. All right. We appreciate you guys. We out.